So let me start by asking you a question. How many of you wear a smartwatch like I do for exercise? Oh, I can see nearly half of you put up your hands. That's very good. Then let me ask you, for those of you who do use a smartwatch, how many of you do real life you are using the so-called internal things technology? Not too many. Not surprised. Fair enough. A smartwatch is a simple use case of the broad variable IoT technology. So by variable IoT, it lets you to put on tiny sensors on or near your body to collect your vital body information, like your pulse rates, your blood pressure, and send those data to the cloud. And then up in the air, this cloud system is crunching your data on 24-7, like a tireless virtual doctor. It will send you alert messages whenever there's something is likely to go wrong. Well, this is great news for us because it helps improve our health by giving out the early, the early warnings. While you might enjoy the huge benefits brought by the variable IoT technology, but do you realize it's having a profound impact on how the health industry is operating itself? So, IoT sounds exciting. So you might be wondering what exactly meant by the Internet of Things. If I may use the analogy, why does the Internet connect people? People like you and me for information sharing. The Internet of Things connects a massive number of machines for machine-to-machine -machine data exchange without human intervention. So one of the most common questions I get asked about IoT is that, what are the things in the Internet of Things? Well, the things refer to anything and everything we as humans to interact with. Now, we started very early days with scientific gadgets, collecting just the research data, like the humidity or the amount of rainfall. And now more and more things getting connected to the Internet of Things even including your body. For example, your coffee machine is smart enough to pour you a cup of your favorite coffee whenever you approach it. Your bathroom scale is able to tell you when you should lose your weight and by how much. So how many things are there in the internet of things? A short answer is, it's a lot. A slightly longer version is, it's really a lot. <laughs> the scientific version is, by 2020, there will be 50 billion devices connected to the Internet of Things. And it's growing exponentially every day. Well, it's good. We, learned, we just learned IoT can help improve our health and make our life easier. But there's some simple question we need to answer. You know, a lot of the, the, the widespread misconceptions about IoT out there. So let me try to demystify some of them. So if some people say, well, the Internet of Things is too far away. It's a, it's a future technology. Actually, it's not. It's happening right now. Some other people say, my well, Internet of Things is just a bunch of dumb sensors collecting scientific data. It's got nothing to do with my life. Well. The sensors are not dumb. They're intelligence. They can collect your body data and analyze the data and tell you when you should look after yourself. So this is the reason why we can think of IoT as a data-driven three-layer ecosystem. So the bottom layer is the so-called data collection. For almost any physical data out there, there is always a suitable sensor for it. And then second layer is called a data communication, because sensors are usually deployed in the field. So we need to transmit the data from where they're first collected to where they will be processed, and that is cloud, most likely. Then here comes the top layer, data analytics. Have you heard people saying, that is key. Data will be the most valuable asset 
of the modern society. But I would argue, data is useless. Data is absolutely useless unless you can make sense out of the data, unless you can turn data into information, knowledge, and insights. And this is the reason why the data analytics is the most valuable part of the IoT ecosystem. Now, we've learned how exciting that the IoT technology is. But do you know it can not only improve your health, make your life easier, the Internet of Things technology can be used to help save some of the greatest challenge the world is facing. In Cairns, we are very fortunate to live at the doorstep to the Great Barrier Reef. Some of you, or many of us, have read enough in the newspaper the climate is changing. The coral is bleaching. The reef is dying. But what if I tell you IoT technology can help solve it, save our reefs? It can even help you to become a citizen scientist by giving you access to real-time water quality data so that you can see for yourself how the water quality is impacting on our reef. So to make that happen, we're working on a project in collaboration with Cairns Regional Council. We're building a low-cost, high-resolution IoT network for real-time water quality monitoring at reefs catchment area. So our IoT network is able to collect a variety of water quality data. If someone out there is polluting our reef, we will be able to tell you where they are and when they did it. To educate the public, and particularly the young kids, at James Cook University Office Island Research Station, we even built a classroom right on the reef. So we educate our young kids to enable them to interact with the reef, to help them see through their own eyes and how the water quality is impacting on our reef. And this helps educating our next generation, our younger generation, and how to maintain a good balance between human activities and reef protection. Now let's move away from the reef to the rainforest. Deep in the Dentry National Park, there's a crane has been in operation for nearly 20 years at Dentry Rainforest Observatory. Up in there, the researchers ride on the crane to get a closer look at the tree's canopy. Back on the ground, researchers have developed a large number of sensors to monitor uh, how the rainforest is responding to climate change by measuring things like uh, soil moisture, the diameter of the trees, and how water flows inside the tree. We even have a vision to smart rise the crane. But don't feel frustrated with your vocabulary if you haven't heard the term smart rice, because I just coined it up. <laughs> the idea is using the latest IoT technology to make the crane smart so that it can automatically collect the tree for canopy data and send them wirelessly to the cloud. It is wonderful, the IoT technology can help save the reef and monitor the rainforest. But this one big problem remains. We don't have enough people with IoT knowledge and skill set. We need to train them as early as possible and as quick as possible. And this is the reason three years ago I started a unique journey. That's when I was offered a, a prestigious offer by James Cook University as a founding professor to lead Australia's first uh, Internet of Things engineering discipline. It was a very exciting offer, but very difficult di choice to make. I was having a very stable job, just promoted to a full professorship at my previous university. If I were to take up this offer, both myself and my wife had to resign our jobs and relocate to somewhere 2,000 kilometers away. It was a really tough decision for me to make. 
But there was one question I kept asking myself. Do I really want to do, keep doing the same job for the rest of my career? Or do I want to seize this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to lead the establishment of Australia's first IoT course? I chose the latter. So back in January 2016, I led a team of JSU academics to implement the plan, and we got credited by Engineer Australia. So officially, we are offering Australia's first Internet of Things course. So I made it. <laughs> we are also investing the cutting edge research laboratory teaching facility in our IoT course. This IoT Innovation Lab is a fully interactive teaching and learning space. Students just love it. They really enjoy working on the hands-on and the industry projects of their IoT course. Our student cohort is growing. They are thriving. More importantly, our industry partners are snapping up our students by giving them internship opportunities even before they graduate. And then there's uh, one of the best universities in China. They actually started IoT earlier than us. They heard some of the good things we are doing, so they sent a, a, a group of exchange students of 30 people to find out what we have done to make this IoT course. So we are checking international students. There's one last slide I want to show you. But it's not up there yet. I didn't forget it. It's just you have to wait for one more year to see it. Because that's when we'll be graduating Australia's first batch of IoT engineers. How exciting is that? I can't wait. Can you? Thank you very much. <laughs>